Hello YouTube. I was asked recently uh, about um, repair and adjustment of the light meters in, in Pentax cameras. Well, I suppose any camera really. Um, now while I don't actually know how to adjust them, I do know some... If you have a, a, a camera, in this case a Pentax, and it's an old Spotmatic and the meter either doesn't work at all or doesn't work correctly I can point out some prob probable places where you can find some trouble um, if you're fortunate, fortunate enough to find an old Spotmatic or a KM or a K1000 that has been reasonably taken care of um, stored properly and better yet has never been taken apart before there's a few things you can look at that are relatively simple um, just to see if there's something you can do to get your meter working again there's no moving parts in these meters really uh, but there are some contact points so let's go right into the bottom of this poor thing this was this is barely even a donor this was improperly stored, it got wet, and is it, nothing even moves. That being said, so you get your, the, the first and prob probably the most likely, in my experience, likely part where you're going to have trouble is these battery compartments. Very often, those old mercury batteries, batteries were never taken out of the camera. <clears throat> so, you know, when whoever back in the 60s or early 70s had one of these and when they upgraded to something better or to even maybe even to digital cameras they toss these things in the closet forget about them and the batteries leak now in this particular style this has a little um, tiny receptacle for the battery built into the bottom and you access it by taking out this cover if you can. I did a video uh, a while back about what I have done to get some of these corroded covers off. One of, the, one of the things that I have found problematic is once you get the battery cover off, the threads that I can't actually show you, I don't have one handy that works, the threads if they aren't clean um, can sometimes create uh, a, a lack of continuity from cover to the rest of the body camera and it has to have good contact uh, so you want to have make sure that the threads are clean you want to make sure the inside of the compartment which I still can't show you I just don't, I just don't have one here oh here's a busted one Uh, this is what the inside of it looks like with this part removed which it's not supposed to come out so don't try to make that happen uh, you want the inside of the battery compartment to be clean and that means really clean and you want this little contactor on the other side of this one that has to be clean also and the bottom of it has to be clean this is inside the camera body and what I, I have done um, in the past with some of these if uh, just wiping them off doesn't cl clean them up enough I have used uh, brass polish you know, silver polish anything anything like that I happen to have some brasso here that I've taken a q-tip on and cleaned contacts with to get a layer of, of crud off and that, I've had really good luck with that and if it's bad enough you can take some emery cloth really really fine emery cloth like maybe 300 grit or better and and polish up the contact now inside the ca camera this see so you seeing this yep this has to make contact with that little thing right there that has to be clean rust free no corrosion it's got to be clean and all of its related contacts 
have to also be clean. It needs to make good contact with its lead wire right here, which is black. And maybe, I don't know if you can see that or not. Maybe you will. It's got to be clean. It's got to be clean here. This connection, which is screwed down, has to be clean. There's a solder joint right here. This is typical. Some will be different. Every every model and year of manufacture has there's a few tweaks that are different. So this is just being typical of what you might find. So that solder joint has to be good. All it's everywhere this wire goes, the connection has to be good. Um, also, there's a switch on Spotmatic, and that's what this this is here. And that's what it actually looks like from both sides. That turns on the light meter and it does it by way of a mechanical connection uh, right here down through the works and closes up this pair of contactors right here and that turns on the meter and, and uh, closes your aperture. Uh, so those that is a nightmare to get to. Um, all I can tell you is I, I hope that isn't your problem because those are really tough to get to and you gotta take multiple well bite of the camera. That being said, moving right along, then you go up to the top of the camera and as I said, I can't, I think I said so far, I can't tell you how to adjust this because I don't care enough to learn. I'm gonna link uh, some information I found below that gives some information uh, on adjusting these things. It's old school instructions for old school cameras. Just bear that in mind. <clears throat> so up at the top you've got right here those are your photo cells. Those are wired together. Those go into the only little circuit board you're going to find this thing has to be screwed down to the body properly. There's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this is a ground wire, but I don't know that for sure. This has to be screwed down correctly. Um, I don't know that there's really anything that can go wrong with these photo cells beyond damage. I suppose they're subject to internal breakdown if, if improperly stored. But those are screwed down here and here wires go over to the little circuit board and there is right here a little adjustable disc uh, and it's a resistor and it, and it adjusts the amount of current that passes through it um, on its way to its next point this is this little processor thing here I think is what interprets the uh, incoming light into uh, something that, that the Actual, well, this actually is a meter. Uh, on the under, hmm, how do I explain this? Underneath this gizmo that says "citizen" on it, uh, this is what act does the actual work. There's a coil in there, and a kind of an armature of sorts. And at the bottom of it all is this hair fine wire that is your actual your actual meter, the, the, the line the fiber that you see when you're looking through that that uh, needle you see, that's here. Um, so if you're getting erratic uh, meter function, those are some things you can check. Um, if you're gonna if you know what you're doing, you can actually test all of these units. Uh, this thing here, I, I've heard. <clears throat> so, uh, moving right along. In this gizmo here, that's actually more of a rheostat. This, I don't know if it'll move now. Because it's, yep, it still moves. That's kind of a rheostat. It regulates the amount of current that flows through the circuit. Um, that's another point that has a contact. It's got little 
old moving part and it's got this ring if you can see it um, I'm not really sure what it is it's probably copper or something similar it's possible you could get a little bit of corrosion in between these those two points the this contact and that metallic ring that it rides on uh, if you're talented with uh, obscure old electronics you can test all these circuits um, you need a some kind of hold on some kind of a multimeter similar to this and you need a, a list of values uh, to compare what it's supposed to be with what it actually is I don't know how to do that and I, I don't care enough to learn uh, my goal here was just to show you some points uh, where trouble could be uh, that are relatively easy to to check battery connections uh, wire connections these these wires are very tiny uh, these are the probably the heaviest wires in the entire camera the rest are all like this which are, are super thin if you find something broken a wire perhaps uh, you can solder it I've done it but you're gonna want a soldering iron that has a pretty fine tip there's something for comparison uh, and this is actually a little big uh, something smaller would be handier for working on these teeny tiny little circuit boards uh, there's one that's actually still in place so you can see there's all this other stuff that when they're complete is around it um, this one has a couple extra gadgets in it I don't remember what model it is it doesn't matter but this one if you can see you can see the works in here um, the thing that actually makes the light meter uh, needle move uh, it's coils uh, armature and it makes as I said it makes the needle move um, I don't know that that's serviceable or that it, it would even be worth it uh, most of these cameras I just assume that the meters aren't going to work and only about half of them have I found them working and of those I've been able to get a couple working um, because of mostly the battery compartment is my experience uh, but if you want to actually adjust it for the variance in the in the battery voltage um, if you can glean anything out of the link or two that I'll leave below good luck to you and post your results and that is that that's all I wanted to show you just some points that you can check to maybe find out what's ailing your over the hill uh, old Pentax Spotmatic uh, the KM's and the K1000's are similar uh, although they have a little more sophistication they're, they're newer and as I said uh, yearly production there was there was some differences one to the next for the most part it shouldn't make any difference they all work about the same and in most other cameras <coughs> that I've worked on you had the same problem battery compartment is almost always the problem um, and I've had I've got a couple of cameras where the meters work but they're jumpy if you if you're looking through the viewfinder you can see that needle wigwag um, so there's a there's a, um, a short in it somewhere maybe not a short but just a poor connection so that is all I wanted to wanted to go over so good luck and until next time